Hi everyone, this is Val Sada. I'm going to be presenting a, a Faith Melisa's Middle Range Transition Theory. So during this presentation, I'd like you to be able to identify the theoretical framework of her transition theory, list a few current applications of the transition theory as identified in the literature, and review ideas and thoughts of how the transition theory can be used in nursing education and practice. So let's start. So the first thing I'd like you to do is picture yourself at the beach. You have a nice warm sun and waves gently rolling up to you in the sand. You are the waves. You are a person in transition, moving from one place to another, calm sometimes, fierce at other times, gently moving back and forth, and hopefully eventually coming to a calm, peaceful sea. So to start a quick review of Melissa's theory of transitions, the first thing is it is considered a high middle range theory. The theory is based on nurse-patient relationships at both the time of vulnerability and their transition period. And I've listed on this slide for um, further review her actual original article found in Advances in Nursing Science back in 2000. So the initial focus on her, in her theory is on the type of transition that a person is experiencing. There are four different types of transition. So the first one is developmental. Uh, for example, Jolie did some work on transition from childhood to adulthood services uh, for people with multiple uh, medical conditions, uh, often a time of challenge for many people. The second type of transition was situational. Um, for example, transition from home to nursing home. Davies did a lot of work in that area in 2005. Again, uh, health illness is a third type of transition that Malaise focuses on, focusing heavily on a recovery period and transition when somebody has a, uh, depression. And finally, organizational uh, transition a uh, classic example of being transitioned from an ICU setting to another unit in the hospital and the patient's experience in that transition. As she explores the concept of transition, the second concept that she presents is pattern of transition. So there's multiple complexities um, in transition. You can have a single or multiple transitions. You can have transitions that are sequential or simultaneous, two things at one time, or you can have a series of transitions uh, in pre predictable order. And the last uh, type of transition pattern that you might experience as a person is a related or unrelated events of transition. Um, I think of that as um, having multiple uh, events in which a disaster or an emergency, for example, where somebody uh, had personal injury but also had maybe related grief losses of people that they cared about in a disaster. That would be an example of related or unrelated events of transition. Malaise further uh, goes into the properties of transition, and this is where, as nurses, we really have an opportunity to impact a person's experience with transition. The first uh, property is awareness, the understanding, perception, and recognition of the transition process or period. The second property is all transitions experience engagement, and that's uh, when a person makes the choice consciously or unconsciously to engage in the transition process. The third property of transition was change and difference. Um, every person experiences transitions differently, and I think from our nursing experience, for example, we know that discharge planning, for example, um, is something that is very different for each patient, each person that experiences it, um, and that's a significant piece of the properties of transition. The second and the fourth um, transition period is time span, 
um, how the t how the transition exper is experienced over time, and it uh, ebbs and flows much like the waves we talked about at the beginning, um, uh, with transition over time. And the last um, property that Malays identifies as critical points and events. These are marker events. Um, that occur in a period of transition, and the example um, that she uses is uh, chemotherapy, for example, is a marker event in cancer treatment. There are a few other transition phenomena that Malaise identifies, um, facilitators and inhibitors. These are actions or events that either help the transition or harm the transition period. There are responses during transition. Um, she identifies those as process and outcomes indicators and the nurse and nursing actions which are, are central to the response and facilitation of the transition process. Again, she identifies that as nursing, nursing therapeutics and we would probably consider those today nursing actions or nursing interventions and evaluation. So I put on the slide for your uh, ease of processing because it can be considered um, a parsimonious um, theory if you see it in a visual way. So I would say that you'll notice that there's double lines going from um, each uh, pattern of um, response to the, con the transition conditions and back to the nature of transitions and it's almost a circular flow. So one thing that um, was identified by other authors is that um, Malaysia's theory does see the patient as passive in this process and that's one um, critique of this particular theory um, that we're doing to the patient or the patient's experiencing something without having an interface with the transition and I think that that in particular um, is a, a significant um, area that needs more research in this particular theory. So a few areas where this theory has been applied. Um, it has been for a variety of different uh, researchers um, applied and used as the um, conceptual framework for the work and these are examples I have on the slide of different um, projects and research uh, projects that uh, Malaysia's theory was used, uh, transitions as we talked about earlier from older adults entering nursing homes, particularly with the caregiver transition process, uh, parents transitioning when the children uh, are going home, um, they've received organ transplantation and they're going home to be cared for by the parents. Uh, interesting study, they used a lot of um, standardized tools um, and to measure discharge planning and parent readiness for discharge and that could be one of the most um, quantitative types of work uh, using uh, Malaysia's theory. Uh, transitions of patients from ICU to another unit and recovery transition for persons with de depression and then I did find this uh, last uh, article quite fascinating on a transition of military wives across the spectrum when their spouse is deployed from pre, during, and post deployment. Um, and there's some real, I think, benefit from um, transitions theory and how that process works and how we can better prepare military wives for that deployment. As you'll also notice, most of these studies have really spanned from the year 2005 up as most recently to 2014. So she does have a quite diverse um, and a lengthy uh, application of her theory. So as I think about what I can do to apply Malaysia's theory, a few areas uh, of my work every day, I think that um, the first thing is um, I am in the process of creating an advising toolkit for senior nursing students. Um, I think that, I think I mentioned in one discussion post that um, I'm really interested in uh, maybe marrying that with the transition shock theory uh, created by Duscher. Um, and I'd like to see if I can create something to 
better prepare students for the transition period that happens from their academic work to their NCLEX pass rate and to the um, first job. Uh, the second area that I think it might be very useful in my work is in um, a course that I teach on community health nursing. Um, I would like to reuse this um, uh, PowerPoint presentation to help introduce them to the theory and then I'm hoping to develop a transition case study uh, probably using uh, the NLN ACEs uh, case study format um, to help them really look at um, transitions for an older adult from uh, hospital to home and then as part of their grading rubric I'm considering using some of the principles of the transition theory um, possibly as part of their weekly clinical journaling um, for the population they're working, looking at uh, in their community health clinicals. So I think there's um, a wide diversity of opportunities to test out the theory in um, educational practice. So I do look forward to using that and it's um, I think a pretty uh, basic um, theory to understand as all good middle range theories. Uh, should be. I've included a list of references um, if you want further review of any topics uh, around uh, transition. And if you need to reach me, there's all my contact information during and after uh, we finish with the course. So thank you so much and have a great afternoon.